We're near Munich, Germany to meet with Wolfgang Baumeister. He's receiving the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine for his pioneering development of cryo-ET, a 3D imaging technique. It spawned a brand new field called structural biology in C2. The Max Planck Institute of Biochemistry Martinsried, Germany. Wolfgang Baumeister has worked at the Institute for more than 40 years. He is a structural biologist. He fell in love with science when he was a child. I found it to be fun to find out things that were unknown. I think it's the fun of being able to make discoveries. He had a natural talent for research. When he was a teenager, he spent three years working on a project about plant ecology. The outcome of that study was then at the end of my grammar school time published as a little booklet. And I think it won me a couple of awards from the German Association of Biologists, etc. I noticed that I enjoyed doing this kind of little research projects at the time, and I think the success kind of reinforced in me the idea that science is something I would be happy to do for the rest of my life. Wolfgang received a bachelor's degree in biology, chemistry, and physics, and a PhD in biophysics. He joined the Max Planck Institute of Biochemistry in 1983. He developed what's called cryogenic electron tomography, or cryo-ET, a three-dimensional imaging technique of frozen biological samples, which makes it possible to see how molecules interact in a cell. It all began with an idea. I thought it would be fantastic and we could learn an awful lot about the functioning of cells if you could visualize basically the entire molecular population inside a cell and how, I mean, uh, the molecules involved interact with each other. Back in the 1980s, the standard practice was to study molecules in isolation. The 26S proteasome complex is a molecular machine that removes damaged proteins or proteins that are no longer needed in the cell. This molecule there, I mean the 26S proteasome, we studied in isolation and it became clear that it is a very dynamic structure. I thought it was, would be great if we could look at the molecule in its functional environment and the functional environment is the intact cell. So that was starting with that. But the science community didn't take his idea seriously. There was disbelief, there was, I mean, a great deal of skepticism. Some made jokes, saying, you know, I mean, it's difficult enough to study the structure of a molecule in isolation and you want to do it now in the very crowded environment of the cell, where I think um, there are billions of molecules sitting together, very densely packed. Wolfgang had to overcome many obstacles to develop the technology. An electron microscope uses an electron beam to capture two-dimensional images of the specimen. In cryo-ET, the 2D images are taken from multiple angles. You put these images into the computer and you make a superposition that is then a three-dimensional structure of the object you are studying. The 3D image is what's called a tomogram. This shows a virus. On the left-hand side you see, I mean, a normal two-dimensional projection that was before tomography. And you see, I mean, it looks, because of the thickness and superposition of many features, it's looked pretty blurred. There's not much detail to recognize. After multiple 2D images are merged, this is a representation of the 3D tomogram. 
The benefit of this image is what? It's the first time, I mean, we get a complete structure of this, of, of herpes simplex virus. And the information can be used to develop drugs to stop the virus. One limitation of cryo-ET was the method could only be applied to very small specimens, such as viruses or bacteria. Wolfgang and his team perfected the use of focused ion B milling or FIV milling to thin cells. Before there was, I mean, thinning by FIV milling, I think only, I mean, these outer parts of the cell, the cellular periphery was thin enough, as you see here, to be electron transparent. Now that we have FIV milling and we can do thinning, I think even these parts, which otherwise remain completely dark and invisible, can be investigated by tomography. Now the cell, we can study the cell in its entirety. Wolfgang and his team also developed template matching. Once new tomograms are obtained, it's compared to a database of information to identify the molecule. We see something, but we don't know what it is. So the identification and annotation of all the densities can be done by template matching. We compare it with, I mean, one of the 150,000 proteins in the protein database. Processing tomograms quickly is essential since his lab captures 300 images a day. His research had a big breakthrough in 2002. We had learned to grow cells directly on an EM grid, and I think it showed, I mean, very beautifully the cytoskeleton, but also other features like ribosomes, proteasomes, etc. So that was, I mean, the moment when I think many people became seriously interested in cryoelectron tomography. And job offers started to pour in. The then president of um, Caltech, David Baltimore, he wrote then, I want this to happen, this development to happen at Caltech. Caltech had a long tradition of working at the interface of physics and biology. Why did you say no to them? Because, I mean, I was not unhappy here. One of the privileges of the Max Planck Society is that you have long-term support for risky projects. Wolfgang's research has launched a new field called structural biology in C2. His methods are applied to Huntington's disease, a neurodegenerative disorder. We zoom in on such a neurotoxic aggregate in the neuron here. So I think these filaments in blue they are the Huntington material, which I mean, the filaments grow in the cell and they destroy the environment completely. You see in red surrounding, I mean, the aggregate material, this is the endoplasmic reticulum, which is more or less completely destructed because whenever these fibrils of Huntington touch a membrane, I think the membrane um, is destroyed. Drugs can be developed to treat the disease. If you know how a molecule interacts with another molecule in the cell, then you can see or find ways of blocking that interaction. And that, I think there's a lot of potential. Nowadays, he's receiving more invitations from pharmaceutical companies to share about cryo-ET and the potential for drug discovery. The, the Ulrich Hardo is a director at the Institute and has collaborated with Wolfgang over the decades. What I most admire about Wolfgang is how he has uh, persevered in this uh, desire to develop this new technology of cryo-electron tomography, which has taken him a very long time, I would say, for which he has taken enormous risks also because there was no guarantee that eventually he would be able to drive it to that stage where it is now, where it can be used by a large number of laboratories around the world. Jürgen Plitzko was a senior scientist in Wolfgang's lab and helped him to develop cryo-ET. He's a little bit uh, shy from the spotlight. What he really cares for and where he also draws his fulfillment is the success in science and when he 
can tackle the truth. Recently, Uta Schutz has been working on a plant biology project with Wolfgang. Baumeister uh, is a mentor that allows people a lot of room to explore. Of course, he likes to guide research in a, a certain direction, but he really allows people to pursue their own interests. When Wolfgang goes home, he wants to relax. He has built a substantial collection of modern art over the years. It's an art piece from an artist, his name was John Reed. It's a kind of memory from our time in in Cambridge, there's always some special memory with each of these pieces associated. He and his wife Gudrun enjoy art and culture together. They met years earlier at a dance hall. I didn't like that that evening. I didn't like the people there. And then I was just leaving and he asked me for the last dance. So we met. The last dance turned into more than 50 years of married life, and they have a daughter. She is also interested in science, like her father. I encouraged Amin to move then into the medical sciences. She did a very serious PhD or MD thesis, and um, she is specialized as a neurologist and also on palliative care. As for Wolfgang's career, he plans to shut down his lab in Germany by the end of the year because he's retiring from the institute and he will spend more time with his team in Shanghai. Basically, in China, every bigger university is trying to establish cryo And so Shanghai Tech recruited me as the director of the cryo center. So I think there has been progress all the time When we come back, we'll meet the winner of the Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences in Beijing. Stay with us.